Okay, in this video, I'm going to talk about creating your own Arduino library. If you program in Arduino, I'm sure you've used uh, third-party libraries, and you know, obviously you use the internal Arduino libraries, but you can also create your own. And I've created a couple of libraries, one for a temperature sensor that was kind of complex, and then also a simple library to run this uh, OLED display for debugging purposes. I was having problems with a couple of projects where I needed to see um, the serial monitor output, but I wasn't able to hook the Arduinos up to a computer. So um, I wanted to use the OLED to display debug information. And the, the OLEDs themselves have a library that you use to interface with them, but they're, they're not really intuitive, and you always have to go back and look up how to, how to write to them. So I wanted to create just a simple interface where I could clear the display or append a line. So basically I uh, append a line each time I want to write a debug statement and the line goes at the bottom of the display and then the, the top line scrolls off and for these displays you can fit uh, up to six lines of debug information. And so some of the other reasons you might want to create a library is um, like in my case you want to kind of abstract the underlying mechanics of, of software and make a simpler interface that's easier to use. That way, like in this case with the OLED display, I could swap out a different display and then edit the library and I would only have to change the code once in that place. And then anything that's using that library, I wouldn't have to change the code as long as I kept the interface the same. Just have those two uh, simple methods of clear and append. Okay, to create a library in Arduino, you're going to need to go to your sketchbook directory and then in there there'll, there'll be a libraries directory that you need to go into and then this is where you want to create a directory that's going to contain your library and I I created this one um, DDS 13060 LED debug and then in here you're going to want to create two files okay so this is C++ so one is going to be the header file and that's going to have the .h extension and then the C++ file is going to have the .c++ cpp extension and we'll look at the header file first and that's going to have um, basically the, the definition of your class and this class is pretty um, pretty basic like I said there's only two public methods well th uh, three if you count the um, in constructor. Um, okay, so for this I'm going to include um, the u8glive.h and that's the that's the library that uh, runs the OLED, OLED display and then you also have to include arduino.h for any library you create. This uh, this little section of code, this namespace constants, you don't, you don't really need that but I have some constants uh, for this library. Basically, the number of lines is the number of lines in the OLED display, and then the characters per line is 22. Line height is 10 pixels. Uh, display height is 64. So I, I just created a namespace called constants. So when I reference those, uh, I'll use constants colon colon in front of it. Okay, so then next is the actual class definition, and this is SSD. 13060 LED debug and so I name under this public section these are the pub, uh, public methods and variables uh, I don't have any public variables usually you don't um, I have two constructors one's uh, overloaded you you give it the reset pin and then I have a couple of other type of OLED displays that are different size than the normal ones I use so I have this horizontal offset don't really need to worry about that then two public methods clear lines that clears the display and then a pen line will add a string which is actually a character pointer a uh, null terminated string to the bottom of the um, OLED display and everything will scroll up so you add something to the bottom the top line goes off everything goes up a line and I have a couple of uh, private variables. So this this 
U8G Live SSD 1306, 128 by 64. That's a pointer uh, for the display itself. So that's that uses the library we referenced up here, this U8G Live.h. So let's see. Okay, so then. Um, I have the the reset pin stored in an integer that's private, horizontal offset uh, integer private, and then there's two private methods, draw and init. Okay, so if we go to the C++ file, so these are the um, constructors and method uh, implementations. So I, I include the header file that we just looked at, and then I have uh, two constructors. They both call init. Um, if you don't have a horizontal offset, I just send it zero, and then you, you give the reset pin. Um, init basically creates the new um, OLED object. Um, I set the reset pin mode, reset pin to output, and then I'm to reset the display, I'm going to set the out, uh, reset pin to low, delay 50 microseconds, and then set it to high. Then I set the font, and then I call clear lines just to make sure it's cleared. So clear lines goes through the line array and basically sets the initial character to null. So remember, these are null terminated strings, so that's going to for the six lines, uh, clear out the display. This then I call the actual UAG library commands to actually perform the um, to redraw the display basically. Okay, then a pen line you send it a, a null terminated string, and this for loop basically just scrolls the lines up the existing lines up, and then it's gonna at line zero copy the the input line and then again it's going to draw it so it's pretty pretty basic um library the this draw method actually calls the the u8g library to to draw the the display okay so this is an arduino sketch that utilizes the library we were just looking at so you just have to include the header file here so that it'll the library will get compiled into the sketch when you compile it and then I declare a reference to the uh, debug OLED debug uh, object here I just call it debug set the reset pin the this OLED display has a reset pin and I'm setting it to the Arduino pin 2 and then in the setup I'm the declaring a new object of that class, sending it the reset pin. And so the only methods you really have to call after you um, create the object are clear. And you really don't have to clear it um, initially because that constructor is going to do that. And then you just start appending lines and, um, you know, I'm just appending a line, wait two seconds, append line, wait two seconds. Uh, you can append the empty string and then I'll bump everything up one. So yeah, it's it's a pretty easy um, example of writing a library. Yeah, so anyway, there you have it. Um, libraries aren't aren't really hard to do. You, um, some, a lot of them are more complex than this one, but this is this is a simple one, but it's actually pretty useful. Um, so if you know if you're if you're constantly rewriting code into your uh, into your sketches, things you you repeat. Um, you might think about just including a library, writing a library for that code, and then including that library in your sketch. So that way, if you find a bug or if you want to add functionality, you don't have to go through all your sketches and make those same changes. You just change it in one place, and then uh, all your sketches that use that library will have the new new functionality. So anyway, hope you enjoyed the video.